for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the Friday morning service of March the 27th, 1998. Of the spring camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Bill Smith is a speaker for the morning. And yea, my son and my daughter, that was war, a great warfare. But the enemy would try to wear thee out in thy physical body to even destroy thy strength. But my son and my daughter know thou this. I, the Son of God, have made intercession for thee that thy faith faileth not. And my daughter, thy God, have not given thee the spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. I defeat every bit of the deterioration. I command it to be gone by the delegated authority in Jesus' name. I command it to be gone from this day forward in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, according to thy word, be it unto my brother and to my sister today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, Tayo no. Ita namaka yoko si kite ando no busi. You see, my daughter, I have brought thee out. Uh, I have chosen thee. I have placed thee in my my hand. And daughter, thou art to be a trumpet under my mouth, saith thy God. And yea, daughter, thou art walking into a day of new beginnings from this day forth, saith the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yea, Lord. Oh, yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Oh, yea, Lord. Father, this morning I speak unto every incurable disease in this building. I command every incurable disease to be banished from this premises in Jesus' name. I command that your life to be brought to this people in such a measure that from this day forth there will be a change in every house in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Master, we minister to you, Master. We minister to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Brother Glenn, we're going to get a different report. <laughs> we're going to get a different one, Brother Glenn. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't you think that it's time that we begin to move behind the veil of humanity and see the glory of God? We've seen the displays of humanity, but now it's time that we see Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Master. 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 Master, according to your word, Lord, be it to us today, ye Lord. Oh, Master, Master, we thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know. Am I on everywhere? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm so grateful that God has kept us alive to now. Yes. I've been hearing last night I was blessed with the Word. I've been hearing so many great things since I've come to camp. You see, I wish I could be here every time. But it's not because I don't want to be here. We just got so many things going in the country of Mexico and around that we just can't be here. But I thank God for the privilege and the honor of being here today, yes. being in this camp. I feel in my spirit that I'm feeling an appointed time. Yes. Hallelujah. But up because why God sent me as a caretaker. In the body of Christ, the enemy is out to wear out the saints of the Most High God. That word in the book of Daniel, but he said the saints of the Most High God is to wear you out mentally. That you cannot take a hold of God. If you get a hold of God, the enemy is no match for God. But the thing of it is, He wants to wear you out mentally that you cannot get your thought pattern upon the Word of God because the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. He doesn't want you in Ephesians 6 and 17 to take the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit, to cut your way through, hallelujah, to God, to become a conqueror and more than a conqueror. Yes, but we must be aware of what's going on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, those two young boys, that 11, that 13 year old boy, Master, we're aware if you'd been in their camp, this would have never happened. But God, we, bring, we blame the leadership there, Lord. Even in the home. But this morning, Master, we take those two boys before you, Lord. They're only infants, Lord. We take them before you today, Lord, that you would move in their behalf, Lord. And, Lord, all of those ancestry curses that's brought upon them, Lord, we break them today and we defeat the very purpose of the enemy, Lord. And God, that you will work out everything for their good and for your glory, Lord, in this behalf. Now all of those that were killed and those loved ones and everything, Lord, God, you work in their behalf today, Lord. And Lord, to remove the hurt, Lord, bring healing to them, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. You know, here's something that bothers me. I've been preaching way over half of my life. Not a preacher in my family, nowhere. But God just called me out. 
I'd been God, I wouldn't have called me. I'd call somebody better. But he did it, so that's his business. I look into the book of Genesis. I see a man in the garden. Then I look in the book of Revelation, I see a man on the throne in rulership with God. Now, brother and sister, today, I mean, know that Paul told us in 1 Corinthians, he said, every man in his own order. Now, brother, I believe that it's time for every one of us as men and women of God that we arise into a new level of authority, into a new level of the realm of the Spirit in God. I believe it's time that we be overcomers and that we are seated in the throne with our Lord, our God. Now, I believe with all of my heart that it's time for the children of light to come forth. The children of light Speak of the children of understanding. Hosea says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. But I'm seeing a new order. And age has nothing to do with this. I want you to look with me. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. Matthew chapter 17. Verse 1. Now, here's something. How many knows that we don't know the day or the hour when our Lord's going to return? There was an occult. It's my brother from isn't it the Houston area that mentioned about the occult that led us in prayer this morning. In my backyard, as it were, just over there in the Metroplex, said that Jesus was going to appear on Channel 18, and he was going to tell everybody they had seven days. And there were people that lived next door, the neighbors, some were complaining, and some of them were renting out parking space, 200 bucks a night. They did all right. But then they said this, Brother Coffey said, maybe God changed his mind. How many know God does not change his mind? He does not lie. Let's don't get caught up in the religious system or the Babylonian system in the world. We don't know the day or the hour. But Brother Coffin, the Bible says that we'll know the season. When the fig tree is putting forth leaves, we know that summer is nigh. Now, I have a lot and hearing a lot about the year of Jubilee. Now, I believe that many areas and many facets, Israel has been, on the, has been the timetable of God. But also in many areas, I believe when Jesus said, I walked out of your house and I left it desolate, there was areas that the time clock stopped on Israel. But Israel became a nation in 1948. Now, we know that there are seven Sabbaths, which is seven Sabbaths is 49. The 50th year is the year of Jubilee. What year is this? Jubilee. All right. Brother Tommy Cook mentioned a little bit last night about 120. 120 in your Bible speaks of two things. The end of one age and the beginning of a new one. Moses was 120 years old when God loved him to death and buried him. Come on. He wasn't sick. He didn't have no wrinkles. He didn't wear glasses like Bill Smith. Amen. Amen. The Bible says so. Then we look as the Ark of the Covenant was being brought. There's 120 priests that are blowing the trumpets. Then we look in Acts chapter 1. There's 120 Jews in the upper room. What are they doing? Blowing the trumpet. Pentecost had been on its way for over 1,500 years. Blowing the trumpet. Now, so the 50th year of Jubilee is when if you're born or you're born in the household, you go free. Unless that you're becoming like some of us. You become a love slave and you bore a hole in that ear and fasten to the doorpost. I've just come to live with you, God. I'm on your hands for the duration. A love slave. Now, 120. Jubilee is how much? 120 times 50. 
you've got 6,000 years. Come on, this thing is mathematically put together. Revelation 12 just was an accident. There is a woman that she's clothed with the sun and the moon under her foot. She's walking in divine government. She's walking in the order of God. There is man and God co-mingled together. Hallelujah. Divine order, government of God. So then you see where that we're at. Now, notice Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. And after what now? Six days. What does the Bible tell us? Psalms 90, verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 8. Day of the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. I am here to tell you that we are in the days of the coming of the Lord and the enemy is working over time. He's working day and night as Revelation 12 tells us. Why is he trying to, do, to defeat the sons of God before they come into their standing with God that they will speak to Him and they'll be gone. Come on. Jesus... I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Come on. Brother and sister, I'm sick and tired of going, being helpless. I'm tired of being incomplete. I'm tired of being overthrown. So it's going to take another work of God in my life. After six days, he take a Peter, James, and what? And John, his brother, and bringeth them into a high mountain apart. Huh? Now, were they not twelve apostles to the Lamb? How come they're only calling Peter, James, and John? They're walking in the inner circle with our God. Brother Coffee, there are people that are Christians, and then there are people that's walking in the inner circle with the Lord Jesus Christ. That knows what the mind of the Father is. After six days, took them into a high mountain. Thank you, Brother Bill. Apart. I want to tell you something. Have you ever sat in front of your television and just cried? And wept? I said, why? I see men that they say, oh, this is the greatest thing in that country. I grieve over the body of Christ. If that's the best is in the country, look at the condition the church is in there. We've got to bring the church up out of the wilderness, leaning upon the beloved. Hallelujah. Now, apart, Peter, James, and John, wasn't it said one time that sons of thunder? Now, apart. Apart from what? All of the Babylonian systems that people are caught up in. Hallelujah. Now, let's notice John chapter 17, verse 1. And I want to... I asked Brother Glenn how long am I supposed to stay here. You see, I've known Glenn and Irma. I've been coming here off and on since the 70s. And I praise God for these people of God. Now, the Word spake Jesus. Now, how many knows this is the prayer of the Lord? Now, in Matthew, He's teaching us how to pray, but they call that the Lord's Prayer. He's teaching us how to pray. But now, here's the Lord's Prayer. John 17. These words spake Jesus and lifted up His eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. The hour has come. Glorify Thy Son that Thy Son may also glorify Thee. There was many times that Samson, which was a move of God for that day, Samson shook himself and it was the power of God. And he destroyed, even down to carrying a couple gates up the mountain that weighed over 2,000 pounds. But then one day when Samson lost 
His ability, the seven locks were removed from his head. He lost the ability. And he only shook Samson that time. Brother and sister, I'm sick and tired of religiosity that men and women saying it's God and God's not near. I want to see the power of God or a shut up our mouth. I want to see God manifested in these mortal bodies of ours or shut our mouth. Took us, said, now, Father, glorify me that I may glorify Father. And this is what I'm crying out today. God, you equip me that I can give glory to your name. Because the Bible said, every one in Mount Zion shall be delivered. Come on. I'm sick and tired of empty hands going on empty heads and nothing happening. I want to see God manifested in these bodies of ours. Hallelujah. It is time the hour has come. Now, how many knows that you have changed orders? How many remembers in Joshua? In the fifth chapter of the book of Joshua, they had crossed over. God had already told Joshua to be courageous and very strong, and on and on. Then they crossed over. They were eating manna. How many knows that manna never crossed over the Jordan? On the 15th day, they began to eat the old corn of the land. Now, brother and sister today, why did they quit eating the manna? Because the manna could not reproduce. It would breed worms and spoil. But God is wanting Himself reproduced in this earth through humanity. Hallelujah. Look around. The man of the faith of the power of the hour. Come on. Come on, sometimes we don't... I know it was told we just drove Cadillacs, wore flying suits, and, and ate fried chicken. <laughs> but sometimes you have to walk over and they think that these here glorified elders said, Look, brother, you can't even blow your nose good spiritually yet. And you say that there's no need for the fivefold ministry. Come on. Brother and sister, sometimes you don't become so popular. Come on, folks. I want to be real, Brother Bill. I want to be real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right? So they begin to eat the old corn of the land. Now, won't you go with me now into the book of Joel? Joel chapter 2 and verse 23. Be glad, then, your children of Zion. How many know that this is a governmental order of God? Zion. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Now, I want to tell you something today. I believe that there will be revival that will sweep the land. But, brother, I am here to tell you today that God is getting His ministers ready. Whether you are a pulpit ministry or what facet of ministry that you have in your church, God is preparing you because, brother, we're going to deliver everyone that's in Mount Zion. All right, all right. Hallelujah. Be glad, then, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for He has given to you the former rain moderately. Now, brother and sister, every last one of us has had... The former rain. And the former rain brought us to a certain level in God. But brother, we're living in an hour of the double portion that's been poured out. And we're receiving the latter rain that's going to bring this crop into full maturity. Hallelujah. The former rain. The latter rain. In the first month. Now, I want you to go with me into Genesis I'm going to use as many scriptures as Tommy Cook does. <laughs> Don't you just love him? Yes. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. 
And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Isn't it wonderful that we can inquire of the Lord? Hallelujah. I had about here some time back. They said, you believe in the fivefold ministry, the apostles and prophets. Do you still believe that they're in the church today? I said, yes, sir, but not every Tom, Dick, and Jerry that runs around and says they are. How many know that there are signed ministries that's in the fivefold ministry? Now, he said, you mean you still believe that today? I said, well, give me some scripture where they take them out of the church. Give me some scripture where they take them out. He said, well, I don't think I know of any. All right. There's a struggle within her. Brother, there is a struggle that's within you and I today. Every one of y'all know Brother Jack Harris. I'm the one that brought Brother Jack Harris to Brother Glenn at our church. And where Glenn met Brother Jack at our church. God spoke to Glenn and told Glenn to come and to spy out the camp. Many years ago. Remember that, Brother Glenn? And I never will forget when that letterhead came to me, deliverance and declaring the kingdom. I believe that's it. Hallelujah. Now, there is a struggle within. I never have a problem with God. The struggle is within me. And now, I've come to the place and I said, God, these struggles... If I complain or if I grunt, don't even pay any attention to it. Just go ahead and do what you need to do. <laughs> if I scream like a pig caught under a fence, don't pay no attention. Just go ahead and do what you got to do. Come on, let's get real. Now, notice what it says. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Here's where it is. And the elder shall serve the younger. Now, brother and sister today, how many knows that was not so? The first son, Brother Bill, got the birthright. But God changed the order and said the elder shall serve the younger. Sister Patsy, what was God after? God is after bringing His last son forward. God is after bringing him forth. So He said, now the elder shall serve the younger. Then I remember reading in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 40, and said, God had provided some better thing for us, that they cannot be made perfect without us. Now, the elder shall serve the younger. Now, what do you think? Did he say the best wine to last? Come on, folks. I believe that I am ministering to the cream of the crop this morning. But, brother, we've got problems. We're still walking in limitations. Sister Sue, it's time that we bury limitations and we walk out in to the fullness of our God. God said in John chapter 3 verse 34 that He had dealt to us the Spirit without measure. Hallelujah. Now, notice what He says. The elder shall serve the younger. Now go with me to Genesis chapter 49. And I want to dig up another one right here. Genesis chapter 48, I'm sorry, verse 13. How many, have you ever seen people that, and I get so uptight with Hollywood evangelists. 
They feel like that God was so lucky that He called them. You said, Brother Smith, you had never had to put up with this. I travel from my home to Lincolnton, Georgia, in my vehicle, burning my gas, using my air conditioner, and I had a truckload, carload of apostles. All that I had were all the whole trip was how that their apostleship was in certain areas. I said, I've got to deal with this situation. I went in to make reservations, and I said, I want to make rooms for a bunch of peons. Come on, I'm sick and tired of these exaltations of man. I want to see God high and lifted up in these temples of ours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's notice something here. And Joseph took them. And as I started saying, how many? They were like, oh, I just got it all. I don't care how much you get in God. You've only got a piece of the pie. And that bill right here, Goodson, he's got a piece of that pie too. Amen. And your pie is not complete without his pie. How many knows that Joseph was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ? Even from the soul and pitted and on and on and on. But how many knows he still didn't have it all together? Come on. Still, he only had a piece of that pie. That's why I need Glenn Miller. I told Glenn one time, years ago, I said, Brother Glenn, we need a balance. We need a balance. My brother and sister, I don't want to lure off to the left or lure to the right, but I want to keep my mind stay upon Jesus. All right? Now let's notice. All right, so Joseph took Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head. Huh? Was this the last son? It most certainly was. Now, his eyes could have been dim, but his spirit. Hebrews chapter 11 that Jacob, Jacob was a dying blessing, that he laid his hands upon imparting the blessings upon his son. All right? So Joseph brings them in birth order. And what does Jacob know? The order has changed, folks. There are many things that we had up to this point is not going on into the kingdom with us. God is renovating the church today. God is Working in the church today. He's taking out that which is not of Him. And He's putting that which is of Him in the church. I want to tell you about our church at home. We have a smaller group than we've ever had, and we're stronger than we've ever been. Can you understand that? Smallest group we've ever had, Brother Coffey, but we're stronger than we've ever been. Because, brother, we know the sound of the trumpet, and we know when it's time to move, and we know when it's time to do something else. Hallelujah. So he brought up to, in the verse right. Jacob said, no, the order's changed. Do you ever have people to tell you that they're bogged down in that order and it hasn't never changed? So he brought them there because Joseph knew everything. But let me tell you something. Ever how high you go in God, you still don't have it all. man in Oklahoma came to me, Sister Pat, and he told me this. He said, I don't believe in some of them things that y'all are preaching about going to be buried over there and this type of thing and on and on and on. And I said, Brother, you know, Adam has always got to get even. Come on. You ain't going to get even in this race. Your Lord never got even, and neither will you. So, then this guy spoke up, and I said, Sir, I want to tell you something, brother. There's some of the things that's been going on at your church that's not right either. And I said, you, Your minister said he had the five-fold ministry and the 24 elders, and I don't believe none of it. Folks, we don't have it together individually, but collectively we're going to meet every need, body, soul, and spirit. Hallelujah. Collectively. 
I need God. He blessed me yesterday. He come and he just hugged me. It wasn't hypocritical love. He said, Bill, I love you and I'm so glad you're here. It blessed me. I didn't have to have Uncle Doc to prophesy to me that you're a son of God. He blessed me by loving me. Amen. Hallelujah. But brother, the order is changed. You see, a lot of times we want to carry what we've had before and take it in with us. But Tommy, some of them don't fit in the kingdom. It does not fit. And it will not work. But brother, the order. So you know, he laid across those hands. How many knows? After six days, he went into the mountain apart with the inner circle. Peter, James, and John. Now, what do you think God is doing today? There is an inner circle of His people that He's taken them into His chambers. I look at Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20. And He said, Come into His chambers until the indignation or the wrath of God is overpassed and be there for a moment. Somewhere we studied up that an hour prophetically was 15 years. And I don't know how we come up to this, all of this conclusion, but we come up to a moment with eight and a half months. I don't know about all of that, but brother, I am here to tell you today that God is calling for us. Yes. Now, let's go into another area of the Bible. Go with me in First Samuel. First Samuel, chapter 16 and verse 7. Now, but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, on his height, or his statue, because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth not, as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but God, the Lord, looketh on the heart. How many knows that he is fixing to have a fight? And this man, he looked everything like Saul. He looked like he was a specimen to be a king. See, it was the same thing when John the Baptist was born. said, let's call him Zachariah Jr. after the old order. He said, no, sir, it ain't going to be Zachariah Jr. His name is John. It's not after the old order, but it's after what I'm doing today. Now, why did he not choose Elab? Because Brother Coffee, he already knew that he would break down under pressure. What happened when the fight got on the way? They marched out there 40 days and night. 40 in your Bible is divine testing. Jesus was tempted of the enemy 40 days and 40 nights. Moses in the mount 40 days, 40 nights. It's divine testing upon this earth. Or he marched for 40 days. Give me a man. But notice what he did. God looketh on the heart. All right, let's go on. Then Jesse called Abinadad. And made him pass before Samuel. And said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse said, Made Shema to pass by and said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Jesse made seven his son to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. Seven is the number of spiritual perfection. Seven hath passed before him, and I haven't chosen none of them. But now, here is David. He's out there tending to the sheep. He weighs 489 pounds. Do you hear the man said, prove it? <laughs> I think that needs to be proved, don't you, brother? Because it's not true. He was a little stripling. The Bible said he had ruddy complexion, which that means, Sister Pat, it's rosy complexion. Look it up into the Hebrew. It means a rosy complexion. But boy, he's going to come out there and fight that king, and fight that giant. Come on. But notice something. Seven has passed by, but now, let's read. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the last one, or the youngest. There remains. The youngest. All right? And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send 
and fetch it. I'm here to tell you today that we've been fetched. Hallelujah. Melody, we've been fetched. Hallelujah. What for? To fight in this army to destroy the works of the enemy. Sin and fetching. Brother Bill, I remember you many years ago. I knew then you'd been fetched. Played that accordion in Oklahoma. I said, see, I met Bill before y'all did. I said, he's been fetched. Now, brother and sister, we that are here at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp, we've been fetched. So let's get in there and walk in the realm of deliverance that we can walk into the fullness of God because God's not going to use mixture no more. Now, fetch him. Well, this is the youngest one, and he's just a strickling. Seventeen years of age. Remember, he's not only the last son, but he's the eighth one. Eight in your Bible is the beginning of a new day. Come on, folks. Brother and sister, I am not leaving Lake Hamilton in the way that I came. I am coming in out of here, going and walking in a different day. Hallelujah. He said, well, I hear this. I hear people thinking that one of the thieves on the cross, he was a good thief. Now, you can say he's a good thief if you want to. But remember what he said. Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Is that what he said, Brother Tommy? Brother and sister, we're always going to do something. Brother, I'm here to tell you that Jesus wasn't coming into his kingdom. He was in his kingdom. You can allow that to be robbed from you if you want to. But, brother, I'm not looking for God to come into something. He is. Hallelujah. God is, Brother Coffee. He's not going to be. He is. Hallelujah. I hear people talking about all the time about El Nino. You know what El Nino means in Spanish? A little bitty boy that can't even talk yet. That's exactly what El Nino means. I butcher the language a little bit. Kyle Palmer does too. He does better than I do sometimes. <laughs> By the way, I thank God for Kyle Palmer, Joel, and Melody Huddleston. They've been such a help to me in the country of Mexico. Kyle was down there with me the other day in January. We dedicated a property building a brand new large church. Kyle and I, we ministered somewhere between 80 to 120 out in the stars because they lost the building. Come on, folks. Come on. Well, that's in the country of Mexico. Let me tell you something, folks. You don't need second happens until the rest of the world's got the gospel. He said, well, I'm not called to the mission field. I beg to differ with you. He didn't say to anybody, there is no missionary calling in the Bible. He said, go ye. Every one of us, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, you see where we're at? David, the stripling. But God is with him. God is with him. He's the last son. The beginning of a new day. Now, go with me back into Matthew chapter 19 and verse 12. I hope I don't get on the everlasting gospel. Uh-oh. 19 and verse 12. Many of y'all have met my two daughters that help us in the ministry, our church at home. Both of them are school teachers in the public school system. And they said, Daddy, I know you're not going to look at your watch, but we're going to start waving a calendar. <laughs> going to wave a calendar on you the day's passing. Come on. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something. I love this precious word. I don't want to find anything to try to curve it around to my life. But I want to take my life and form it by this word. Now, let's notice something. I'm still dealing with the children of light. Verse 12, For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb 
There were some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. There be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. What is that? Will not produce nothing but the kingdom of God. Come on. This is what the eunuch will not produce. Now what does it say? He that is able to receive it. Brother, everybody is not going to receive it. Let him receive. Brother Coffee, there are some men and women that have been made eunuchs for the kingdom of God. They will not produce Babylon. They will not produce the religious system or the religious order. They will only produce the kingdom. You know why a lot of preachers don't want to preach the kingdom? Because it gets off the emphasis on how great I am and it lifts up the Lord Jesus Christ. It centers everything around the Lord Jesus Christ and puffs up no flesh. Hallelujah. He said, what are you talking about? Well, let me get it down real plain English. We had a man from one of our cities in the state of Texas. We advertised him when we didn't know no better. Back 30 years ago, we advertised him as the master of the keyboard. And when we quit advertising him as the master of the keyboard, he quit coming. We learned that there's only one good, and that is the Lord. Amen. There's only one good, and that's him. Yes. So now, what are we doing? We're making ourselves eunuchs for the kingdom's sake. Hallelujah. Not produce in any other order. There was a man... He thought he was cutting me down and grinding me to powder. He said to me, he said, You know what, Bill? Comes to the things of God, you've got a hog spirit. I said, Thank you. Thank you. Because you know what? Joel once said, Let the drunkards weep and howl. What intoxicated on the things of God? have addicted myself unto the ministry. So I don't care if I... And then he said to me, Bill, you're a move of God from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. And you don't want to preach nothing else. I said, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Because, brother and sister, there is nothing else. This gospel, not a gospel, but this gospel. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 34, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all of the earth. Hallelujah. And you know what I think the gospel of the kingdom is? Deliverance and moving in a higher order. Huh? Moving in a higher order in God. Praise the Lord. All right? So now, let's go a little further over into Revelations chapter. Let's go into the book of Revolutions. Good. Chapter 14. Chapter 14. I heard somebody, I think it was Sister Irma, in that prophecy, talked about the Lord upon that white horse. Now, I want to tell you something. If you believe He's coming back on the white horse, that's all right. He's God, He's omnipotent, and if He wants to ride a horse, that's His business. But I want to tell you something. Brother Tommy Cook, I feel that I'm ministering to the white horse company this morning. Revelation 19, and said, He was up on the white horse. Then what did He say? And these that follow Him, what were they riding? White horses. What was, now what are you talking about, Brother Smith? I'm talking about a thoroughbred. I'm talking about where there is no part me and part God. I'm talking about a fullness of God manifested in these bodies of ours. That white horse company, he's riding them in the earth today. Hallelujah. Now, let's notice something. And I looked. And lo, a lamb stood upon Mount Zion, or Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in the forehead. Brother Bill, that's the birthmark. 
I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Now, he ain't talking about the cat of nine tails. He said, I bear in my body the marks, the mind of Christ. Now, here's 144,000. Whether that's a literal company, that's all right. If you believe in literal company, that's all right. But I believe that it's a group number. It's 12 times 12, which is 144,000, which is a group, which is a spirit-guided life. Now, that's tough, isn't it? He said, you're a little old bitty preacher to be throwing out them kind of things. Well, you know what? Dynamite comes in small packages, so they told me to hop over and blow up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 144,000. The Father's name. The mind of the Father. Didn't brother talk to us last night about Miriam? Where did the leprosy break out at? Right in the forehead. What is leprosy? It's a type of sin. It broke out into her forehead. But now, here is a company that's up on Mount Zion. And they've got the Father's name written in their foreheads. The mind of Christ. Now, if you have your understanding enlightened. How many remembers when Paul prayed the priestly prayer in Ephesians 1? He said in verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Now, what is he saying? That you don't walk in darkness. How many knows that we look in Genesis 1, and Genesis 1, God created the sun to rule the day. And He created the moon to rule the night. But then we get into the city of Revelation 21, and if you please, could, would you accept that you're a part of that city? Abraham was looking for a city which had foundation. It wasn't thrown out there and with no constructive work. It had foundation whose builder and maker was God. Now, so, but in the city, I believe I read, Brother Tommy, that it said there was no more need for the sun and the moon either. But you know what, Sister Pat? He said that the Lamb was the light of it. Brother and sister, what are you saying? We're entering into a never-ending day of the Lord. Unbroken fellowship walking under an open heaven. Come on, folks. It's time that we enter in, folks. I believe that I'm past due. Come on. Oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. But I want to tell you something. On my way here to this camp two years ago, I had been ridiculed because I was pressing toward the mark. Because, you know what, Brother Coffee? Only one's going to receive the prize. What is the prize? It's the crown of life. All right. And so I said, God, I know I can't force birth this thing. And I can't make it happen. But God spoke to me, Brother Bill, and he said, But son, you can stand at the goal line and you can be knocking on the door. Sit there and be ready, and when it opens, you walk through it. Walk through it. And they were upon Mount Zion. Father's name is written in the forehead. And now they heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard voice of harpers harping with their harps. Now, what do you think we're doing? We had people to leave our church because we worshiped too long. We worshiped too long. Melody, they need to go with us to Mexico, don't they? I'm going to tell you about these two right here. This Joel and Melody are so precious in the hands of God. They were with me, and you can ask them both. The power of God so came into that van. We moved out under the mesquite trees. Nobody was around but just us and the group because we was going to cook some fish on an open cooker. I felt like that the Spirit of God was actually going to lick, lick up the mesquite trees that were around. Am I telling the truth? And brother, there was a little young evangelist there with us going through such a crisis. And God did every bit of that to lift him up from where he was at, to get him moving on in God again. 
Joel and Melody was right there by my side when this took place. And brother, we was in the desert, in the mesquite bushes. Hallelujah. But God. Now, then let's notice. And they sung as it were an old song. I'll fly away. <laughs> Come on. How far away? Oh, I got messed up. He's building me a mansion next door to Jesus. In my Father's house, there are many bones, many levels, many places in Him. Come on. And they sung a new song. Now, I want to tell you something. I believe that song will be sung, and I believe that it will be preached. A new song. What? A new order. All right? Then, ooh, time's running out on me. All right. And they, before the four beasts, no one could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are, they were not defiled with women. What? The religious systems. Now, there is only two women in the Bible. You said, but Brother Smith, I've read a lot of names in there. But one of them represents the harlot system, and the other one represents the true church of God. And they're not defiled with the systems of this earth. Hallelujah. All right? And then what? What These are they that follow the Lamb whithersoever He goeth. Now, Here's the scripture that I've been trying to get to all morning now. Go with me in the first Thessalonians. This is the one that I've been after. How many believes that there was a man in the garden? How many believes that we did a good job of showing forth the image of the earthly man? The dust man. But how many know that the dust man is the realm of the serpent's meat? Isaiah chapter 65, verse 25. And so, but you see, notice what it says here. The dust realm. Chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you for yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. How many knows the Apostle Peter talks about the Lord coming as a thief in the night and the earth is going to melt with fervent heat? How many knows that this started off and there were four rivers flowing out from the Garden of Eden? You know, I wish y'all could have been to our convention. We had a great meeting with God. But you know what? It comes back and there's only one river and it's clear as crystal. It has twelve men of fruit. And the leaves are for the healing of the nations. What is the leaves? It's your testimony. How do you identify a tree by its bark and by its leaves? Now, but notice something. People run up to me and they said, Oh, but Brother Smith, he's coming to us as a thief in the night. I said, that depends on which company you're in. How many know that God's going to let His friends know what's going on? We don't know the day of the hour. We've already read that to you this morning. But, brother, we know the season. And you tell me that we're not in darkness and gross darkness upon the people today. But then He said there was a light coming. People were going to walk out of darkness into His light. Now, let's notice. Come as a thief in the night. Depending on... Which company you're in. All right, let's read on. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail cometh upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, look at the next one. But ye, brethren, I'm talking about that last son. Come on. The children of light. All right. But ye, brethren, 
or not in darkness. Why? Because you understand. And I want to tell you what my grandfather, full-blooded Frenchman, taught us as growing up. Son, when you see that you're going to die, fall on your face and repent in a hurry. And I told my grandpa, I said, Grandpa, that is no security. Grandpa, I don't want all of my works burned up. I want to walk with him. Come on. He said, how long have you been called to preach? I was called to preach when I was five years of age. Now, I didn't do it, but I still called. Now, but ye are what now? Shall, but ye, brethren, are not of darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Because why? You understand. All right. Verse 5. Ye are the children of light. Yes. Now, you tell me that the you not that's made themselves, you not. For the kingdom's sake, that they're not called out from those that's made of man. Remember Revelation 14. They were not only redeemed from the earth, but they were redeemed from humanity. Now, but ye, what? Are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Hallelujah. I repeat again. Revelations 21. The city has no need of the sun, no need of the moon, because the Lamb is the light. There are. Now, brother, and I'm sure that you've studied about the tabernacle of Moses. Brother Bill starts singing, moving with the cloud. My little granddaughter, she just rears back and she sings, move with the cloud. How many knows that when the Ark of the Covenant in that one place there, did you know that were artificial light in every other area of that tabernacle? In the holy place there was a light from the lampstand. Is that correct? And out in the courtyard was the light of the sun and the moon. What about the most holy place? There was no artificial light there. Only the light of God was in that place. Now, how many knows that David went and got the ark, even though he did it wrong the first time, but he went back and he studied the word of the Lord, and he said, only the priest is to bear that ark upon their shoulders. And that's the way he brought it back. But how many know that people still went back to that old form of worship and there was no Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle whatsoever. It was moved to another mountain, which was Mount Zion, and there was only a tent that David pitched for that. And the others were still back there worshiping. You still have the same thing today. They don't know that presence of God, but the Tommy is now moved to another mountain. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on your foot. The presence of God... It's already moved to another mountain. Now, brother, let's, let's, let's do what we sing. Let's move with the cloud. Hallelujah. Let's move with God. Hallelujah. Let's be up to date. Praise the Lord. Let's walk as children of light. Now, how many believe that it's time for the last sun to come forth? I want to tell you something. I look at Brother Glenn, Sister Irma. A lot of you don't know Sister Irma from back in the 70s. She was one of the most precious ladies. But if you need to be told something, she could still tell you then. And she told me that I was going to get saved one of these days. But I knew them back in there, walking with God. Travel with them to other meetings in other states and everything. And I look at us. They're getting up in years. I want to tell you something. That sweet little baby that belongs to Melody's family here in the kitchen. Reach over and just looks over there and just laughs and says, I said, that baby's got the sweetest spirit. But I want to tell you something. 
I'm crying out. Brother Tommy Cook, for God to preserve me, Glenn, and Irma, that we can go in the generation with that baby. You said it's out of reach? Well, dream on. Didn't he say we're going to dream dreams and see visions? I'm asking God day by day to preserve me that I can go in that generation with that baby. I don't care if I'm much older. That doesn't have nothing to do with it. Go in in that generation. So what's wrong with God preserving? He said, I don't believe that. Caleb said, I'm just as well and able today as I was 45 years ago. Two men above head and shoulders, above everybody else. They were the only two years, only two people above 20 years of age that went in. What did they do? They stopped the aging process and they stopped time. They spoke to the sun and the sun stood still and the moon backed up in the valley of Angelon. Brother, it's it's time that we quit playing church and we move into what God's called us to be. Is this heavy? Hallelujah. Children of light. God has provided some better thing for us that they should not be perfect without us. Let me tell you something. I want to walk in this earth again with the Apostle Paul. I want to walk with the Apostle John. We talked about the three that walked in the inner circle. But even out of that three, there was another that had a great love. He leaned upon the very heartbeat of God. Come on. Brother, how close can we get to Him? How much of His life can we allow to interpenetrate into our being? Folks, I want to be real. I want to be right. I want to carry this gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. Praise the Lord. In closing, I want to share something with you that I've never had this experience before. And I'm not against you if you have. I'm not telling you that whatsoever because one of my greatest friends that I have in this building right here is a doctor this morning. My wife said to me, she said, you need to go and get a physical. She said, you've never had one. Never had a doctor. Never had a doctor. I went there. Finally, after five weeks, now what if he's going to die? Five weeks, I got an appointment in. It's a good thing I wasn't in bad shape. So my five weeks came along. I went in. The doctor looks at me and he said, The chart says you've never had no surgery. That's right. The chart says that you don't take no kind of medication. I said, That's right. And so they look at me like I fell out of a well. <laughs> they look at me and they said, But your heart rate, your blood pressure, it's all perfect. I said, Well, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. So then... They'd start drawing that blood out of my arm and they'd draw them out look like they was getting plenty to even to sell. <laughs> so they said, we're going to send this into the lab and we're going to have this checked and then we'll give you the results on that. So they called me back in three days and they said, Reverend Smith said everything is perfect. Now I want to tell you something, Brother Coffee. this is where I'm reaching for. Every last one of us will sit around and we'll thank God for miracles that He's given us in our physical bodies. How many know the Bible said that healing is the children's bread? But how many of us, Brother Glenn, are going to stand and thank God that He's kept us alive and healthy all of these years? Hallelujah! That's the God that we're serving today. That keeps us healthy all of our days of our life. And that's what I'm crying out for. In God today. So folks, how many of us today are going to walk as the children of light today? Walking in. Another, or the first Adam made a living soul. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit, which means a quickening spirit. How many wants to walk in the life today? Come on. How many wants to keep this all together? Body, 
soul, and spirit. Walk into life. And I want to tell you something. It's not going to be long now. It's not going to be long. And I want to walk into life. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together. Father, this morning, we're grateful for Your precious Word. God, we're grateful for what You're saying today and what You're doing today, Lord. God, we want to walk into a realm of deliverance, Lord, in the realm of Your kingdom, Lord. Lord, we want to be, walk beyond every detort, deterioration of our physical being, Lord. And we praise You for it today. In Jesus' name. Father, the Word that we have given this morning, Lord, Anything that's not been of you, Lord, erase it from their minds. But God, those that the true Word of God, open up their understanding, Lord, that they'll take it home with them, that they'll not be the same person as they were when they came. Father, we'll be careful to give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Yea, thou art not ignorant concerning his devices. Yea, he is walking through the land, yea, even policing the land as it were. Yea, even to wear out the saints of the Most High God. But know thou this this day, I have delegated unto thee authority. And yea, even as thou wast singing, yea, that thou wast put underfoot, know thou this this day, that thou must exercise that authority in every level. Yea, to put underfoot, yea, that it'll no longer be free to run rampant. But yea, know thou this, that the saints of the Most High God, the enemy is trying to wear down and to wear out. But know thou this, I have prayed for thee. Yea, that thy faith faileth not. So recognize, yea, the delegated authority that thou hast been delegated today. And yea, not use only lip service, but yea, walk in this authority. Be surrounded with authority. And yea, thou shalt even put the enemy unto naught, because thou didn't look into the word, and thou didn't and even see that, behold, I give unto thee power over all of the powers of the enemies. And yea, in many subtle ways that he does try to creep in, yea, I am making thee wise. Yea, that thou will know the craftiness thereof. And yea, that thou will enter in behind the veil of humanity. And yea, and destroy the very work of the evil one, says thy God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Yea. And yea, know thou this. In many areas in the world, the truth has fallen in the street. Yea, we even see as saints as plain as the children in the marketplaces. But yea, know thou this, the hour is come unto thee. Yea, that thou must be very sober. And yea, that thou must recognize even the very foothold. And yea, even though in a way that the enemy doth come in like a flood. But know thou this, that even as thou doth apply, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. So walk not as the weakened in the earth, but yea, become militant, uh, yea, become holy, violent, that thou would even destroy even the very kingpins uh, of the enemy, because this day has come unto thee. So let it not be aware unto thee that thou would be overthrown in the wilderness, but yea, walk thou out, saith thy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We serve a mighty God this morning. Amen. 
There is nothing too difficult for him this morning. For us, yes, but not him. And we're in him this morning. We can do all things through Christ for strengthen us this morning. And I want to hear a repeat. I want the roof to come off of this building. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible. Father God, I made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. I know you can do better than that. I know you can do better than that. When you go to football games and basketball games, you're yelling for your team. But we're on the greatest team in the world this morning. The greatest team in the world this morning. And Jesus is our captain. So let's let it roll this morning. Ah, Lord God. The earth by thy great power. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Oh, great and mighty God, great and powerful and mighty in thee. Mighty in thee. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Sing it. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Well, my glory and the lifter of my head, my glory and the lifter of my head, for thou, O Lord, my shame to me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me. Glory! 
This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.